Hello. Today we're going to be looking at The Charge of the Light Brigade, which is on page 32 of your poetry anthologies. If you didn't manage to get your poetry anthology before you went home, do not worry, I've put the poem in its entirety on the third slide. This may mean that you have to copy it out, which I understand is arduous, but it will be absolutely crucial in terms of your understanding of the poem. So, first thing, let's look at the title. It's really important that you understand who or what the Light Brigade actually was, otherwise this title makes no real sense for charge of the Light Brigade. So the Light Brigade were the British Light Cavalry Force. That meant that they were army on horseback, so they had very limited resources. It mounted light, fast horses which were unarmoured, and the men were armed with lances and sabres. So this took place in Balaclava, which is in the Ukraine. I'd like you to annotate your title with this information, and I recommend you pause the video here for two minutes whilst you do that. Okay, so developing our understanding further. As you know, it's really important to look at the context of a poem before you move on and start reading it. So Tennyson, our poet, was really famous during the Victorian era. And he wrote this poem, having read about the battle in a newspaper, he wrote this minutes later. Um, and he wrote it as a tribute to the men who died in this disastrous battle between British soldiers and Russian forces in the Crimean War. The Charge of the Light Brigade is basically about a misunderstanding between officers that meant that the Light Brigade, which was like 600 men, were ordered to advance into a valley surrounded by enemy soldiers. The cavalry were only armed with swords, whereas the Russian soldiers had guns. So the Light Brigade were virtually defenceless against their enemies, and many of them were killed. Ultimately, absolutely no gains were made by the British here, but hundreds of lives were lost. I would like you to pause the video and summarise this information in your anthologies for five minutes. Pause now. Okay. This is for you lucky, lucky people who forgot to take your anthologies home. You will be needing to copy this out into your books, I'm afraid. So if I were you, I would do it in the middle of the page and I would leave space around it so that you can annotate. I know it's very boring, but you will thank me next year when you're in year 11. So if you don't have your anthology, you will need to pause the video now whilst you write this out. Okay, we're going to look at the first stanza, which goes half a league, half a league, half a league onward. All in the valley of death rode the 600. Forward, the light brigade, charged for the guns, he said. Into the valley of death rode the 600. So here, you've got this reference to half a league, which is an old fashioned way of measuring distance. I think a league was about three miles, so this just means a mile and a half. Um, just so it makes sense to you. But you'll notice here you've got this repetition and the rhythm is meant to evoke a sense of um, horses galloping. So it's meant to mimic the sound of the men charging into battle. And because of this, it, it kind of gives the poem a sense of movement as though the poet is trying to recreate the charge. Here, you've got this sense of foreboding all in the valley of death. Now, Tennyson's borrowed this from the Bible um, as I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. And it kind of hints here about the inevitability of all those lives being lost. But the biblical reference does make the, um, the soldiers sound almost glorified here, like they're holy. And here, I'd like you to think about the punctuation. And you've got this imperative sentence, so forward the light brigade. And it's it's got this sense of purpose and formality the soldiers are meant to be obeying but Tennyson quite deliberately has said he said and the he he's referring to is um is a man called Nolan I believe and in his original poem that was published in the times he actually named him this was later attracted but it's almost Tennyson's way of being a bit cynical about the officers in charge that had no real thought about the men who they were sending to their deaths. And you'll notice throughout the poem, the 600 is referenced repeatedly. And that's just to emphasize how many lives were lost in this battle. 
Now, what I think would be helpful is for you to pause this for five minutes whilst you write down that information around your poem. So pause now. Okay, moving on to stanza two. Forward the light brigade, was there a man dismayed? Not though the soldier knew someone had blundered. Theirs not to make reply, theirs not to reason why, theirs but to do or die, into the valley of death, rode the 600. And here you've got Tennyson kind of criticising the leadership style. It implies that whoever made the order was completely incompetent. And then here it, not though the soldier knew and theirs not to make reply, it implies that the soldiers had this kind of blind obligation just to go in and follow instructions. And Tennyson isn't criticising that for them because at the time that would have been expected and that would have been heroic. But I think he's just emphasising how how good they were at their job in comparison to the officers that really didn't know what they were doing. And here you've got the there's not to make reply, there's not to reason why, there's but to do or die. And it kind of, it reinforces that sense of inevitability that they are going to die. And the rhyme makes it sound like they're almost trapped in it, like they can't escape because it is inevitable, it's going to happen. And again, you've got that number 600 repeated right at the end of the stanza again to really emphasise the amount of lives that were lost. Now, something you might want to consider is the fact that the poem is narrated in the third person, which also shows the distance between the officers making the commands and the soldiers that were involved in it equally. This was the first battle that was really publicised in the newspapers, and I think that made a difference. People were very um, questioning of what happened too, and I think Tennyson's making a point about that as well. OK, pause here. Right, before we move on to stanza three, I realise I'm probably bombarding you with a lot of information. So what I might do now is after I talk about each kind of question for the stanza, I might give you a couple of seconds to pause it if you want to write it as I'm talking rather than wait until I've rambled at you for a while. Um, if you do get confused at any point, please just drop me an email and I can clarify things. So the third stanza, cannon to the right of them, cannon to the left of them, cannon in front of them, volleyed and thundered, stormed up with shot and shell, boldly they rode and well into the jaws of death, into the mouth of hell, rode the 600. And again, this repetition, cannon to the right, cannon to the left, it just shows how surrounded the soldiers were and how they weren't in a position to fight back because they just weren't armed well enough. Um, it shows that they're trapped in that position. OK, here you've got the idea of volleyed and thundered. So it, it just emphasises the noise. Of, of the cannons going off and stormed it with shot and shell. The poet's trying to use alliteration here to, to make us feel like we're part of the action, to try and make us empathise with the soldiers, like we're in the same position as them. And then finally, the this stanza, you've got this imagery, into the jaws of death, into the mouth of hell. And this shows us how dangerous the situation was, but also how noble and brave the soldiers must have been to, to kind of face that sort of situation head on as well. OK, annotate your stanza. Stanza four. Flashed all their sabres bare, flashed as they turned in air, sabring the gunners there, charging an army while all the world wandered, Plunged in the battery smoke, right through the line they broke, Cossack and Russian, reeled from the sabre stroke, shattered and sundered. Then they rode back, but not, not the 600. OK, I would like you to think about the use of verbs in this stanza. So you've got flash, sabering, and it's all intended to glorify those soldiers. Um, the enemy isn't really important in this poem. It's it's all about honouring the deaths of the British soldiers that died um, and showing how even though they didn't have adequate weapons, they still gave it everything they had. OK, 
Okay, second point is where it says all the world wandered. And this kind of has a double meaning. So if you're looking at something with a sense of wonder, you're, you're really impressed by it. So is the world impressed by the soldiers? Or um, more cynically, could the poet be saying all the world wondered why, this, why the officer made that decision, how such a miscommunication ended in such bloodshed? Um, and there's almost this underlying sense of judgment here. Okay, here you've got the sabre stroke shattered and sundered. And again, it's, it's meant to mimic that sound of swords kind of clashing to make us feel like we're in the action. And finally, a repetition here, not, not the 600. It forces us to slow down and it forces us to reflect on the lives that were lost. It's, um, it's almost a melancholy sense to the end of this stanza. Okay, annotate your stanzas. Penultimate stanza. Cannon to the right of them, cannon to the left of them, cannon behind them, volleyed and thundered, stormed out with shot and shell, wild horse and hero fell. They that had fought so well came through the jaws of death, back from the mouth of hell, all that was left of them, left of 600. So you've got this is kind of contrast to stanza three because the cannons are now behind them so they're coming out of the battle so it's almost the tone of the poem has changed because before there was a sense of purpose but now they're just trying to return and they've lost so many men again you've got the alliteration to make us feel part of the action and here it's it's once again particularly melancholy. While horse and hero fell, they that had thought so well. And you've got this idea of, of the tragedy of those men that lost their lives. Um, and again, coming out again, but we know that the amount of deaths were inevitable. This poem is pretty long, but in terms of analysing it, it's quite easy. It's, it's literally a story of men going into battle and coming out having lost loads of their army. Okay, annotate your stanza now. Final stanza, we're nearly there. When can their glory fade? Oh, the wild charge they made, all the world wandered. Honour the charge they made, honour the light brigade, noble 600. So here we've got Tennyson revealing his feelings towards the soldiers. So the impact of that rhetorical question is that we should continue to honour those soldiers for the sacrifice that they made. And again, we've got the repetition here. All the world wandered. So he's really emphasising the judgement that was placed on those officers that made the decision without really thinking about the men it was going to affect. Here, you've got more imperative sentences. So remember, they're commands. And he's, Tennyson here is almost instructing us to honour those soldiers that lost their lives, which is emphasised here by the adjective noble. They're the noble 600. So at no point in this poem does Tennyson criticise the soldiers for their blind obedience. Instead, he celebrates their bravery and, and subtly criticises the officers that weren't actually involved but got to make all the decisions. So that is the poem. Once you've annotated that, I've got one final task for you to complete. Okay, you've seen this sort of challenge grid before on the other poems that we've studied. I would like you to try and do at least one of each colour because it's going to develop your understanding and you should complete these questions in your exercise books because you definitely won't have space in your anthologies. So you choose which ones you'd like to do. But ultimately, this is going to consolidate your understanding of this poem. Feel free to email me with any questions. Sorry, I've just bombarded you with a ton of information. Hope you're all staying safe. Oh, here's a cat. Bye.